<clears throat> so um, hopefully Liam's whetted your appetite a bit, you know, and, and the reason that you're you're here in this um, event today is very much to talk about WVD and how you can adopt that technology within your organisation and how you can make it work for you. But you know, you, you don't want to go all out, um, you know, replacing all, all, all your endpoint devices with the uh, WVD overnight. You know, it, it's a it's a it's a countered um, conversation that needs to to have a lot of thought going into it. Um, and that's where a proof of concept will come into it. It's a it's a small exploration um, to validate some some niggles you might have in the back of your head or, or some some genuine con constraints that you have within the operating environment that you're currently working. Um, so yeah, we pulled out some some common um, threads that we, we we've picked up from conversations along you know, the the last year and a half um, since you know, WVD's been 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 a thing in the marketplace. Um, you know, things like software. Yeah, I've got some some old legacy software that you know, I I have access to at the moment. It's a you know, line of business application that if I don't have access to, can cause my business significant problems. You know, it could be a payroll system, could be a CRM system, whatever that is. You know, how will that work going forward? How am I going to have the integration of that product with things like file services and identity management? Yeah, how am I able to? To, to ensure that that software works over a remote connection. What, what will the latency introduce you know, to, to my environment? Um, you know, the, the big one that most people should have is thinking about the, the desktop experience that your users are, are receiving. You, know, you, you want to make sure that your users have the, the ability to execute their job you know, in, in an efficient manner. You don't want people having to wait for data to load, screens to refresh, access to certain activities they don't want to have to jump through hoops you know pat their head and rub their tummy at the same time to access tools that will impact the productivity of them as workers um so we want to make sure that we're giving them the the, the desktop experience that they require to do their job um remote management is always something that's you know a, a bit tricky at the moment you know people work in offices they, they, they well say in them at the moment and normally people work in, in offices but you know the last year has kind of changed that, um, it kind of flipped it on the head a, a little bit. So once we start bringing compute elements and end to user compute components out of, of offices, how do I retain management of that? How am I able to, to align patches? How am I able to, to extend my Active Directory components to make sure that even things like password you know, reset, you know, how, how can I re reset my user passwords when they're not in the office to connect them to the, the, the local area network? How do I manage printing? How do I manage file services? You know, how am I able to, to make sure that I've got control over my, my infrastructure estates if people are working from home? And that goes hand in hand with security components as well. You know, once I start delivering desktop services from potentially home PCs or home unprotected networks, you know, how can I retain security control, make sure that you know, the corporate data that we're custodians of is always protected and I'm alerted if things change, or am I able to, to apply policies to, to certain aspects? Yeah. How do I know that Sean O'Brien is logging in at three in the morning from you know, an unknown IP address uh, from an unknown device? How can I track that that is a genuine request because I've forgotten to do a report for the morning and I'm up all night trying to you know, catch up and make sure that you know, I, I'm not under the heat in, in the morning? So yeah, how, how can I make sure that this is all, all under my control? Because I think that's probably one of the, the, the biggest fears that people have is you know once once I start delivering desktop services in a remote manner in an uncontrolled environment I, I lose all, 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 all understanding of, of security and management that you know I, I need to, to enforce as well. Let's go to the next one Liam. Understanding what your users are doing as well is also a massive part of um, establishing a POC. Um, when I ran IT departments, I've, I've, I've run a sys, as a sysadmin, as a, you know, a, an IT manager um, in previous lives as well. I had an understanding of what I thought my users were doing. Um, I, I believe you know, finance users, they, they live in you know, Sage all day. You know, they, they, they run reports in Excel. They, they do this, they do that. Um, you know, my, my sales teams, they, 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 they're always on the web. You know, using the CRM tool, they're doing this, they're doing that. You know, have an understanding of what tools they're actually using. Um, a lot of that is guessing and a lot of that is assumption based. It's based on anecdotes. It's based on what our understanding of, of what work happens within our organisations you know, actually happens. 
Um, so having a, a deeper understanding and being able to remove assumptions is you know, essential to understanding what your users are doing. So how you can plan going forward what, what service you need to give your users. Um, yeah, we all know, you know resources are a, a constraint um, to, to, any, to, to any point. Um, if you give a user a laptop, you know, they're, they're, they're going to fill it full of Chrome tabs. They're going to you know, open Teams, open Outlook, have everything up and running at the same time. You know, user behaviour will, will get you into a mess potentially. So education is, is, is obviously key to this as well. Um, but, you know, understanding working patterns and how people operate, you know, the Margaret in accounts isn't going to change the way that she operates because you know, you're, you're limiting the, the resources she has at her disposal. She's just going to get frustrated that she can't have 15 Chrome tabs open with all her shortcuts and you know, a picture of her cat in the background, you know, <laughs> giving her you know, the optimal working experience for her. This is how she works. So limiting resources and understanding what resources people are using is you know, another big part of you know, what, what we're trying to achieve here in, in getting a full comprehensive understanding of what your users are doing. So we, we use tools like this Lakeside tool. So Lakeside pro provide this um, a tool called SysTrack, which will go into a lot of detail and understand what your users are doing. So it will monitor activities. It will say, yep, I, I'm logging in the morning. I open Outlook, I open Teams. I send you know, emails or, or morning, I, I catch up with my day, plan my day. OK, then I need to write a report, so I break out into um, words. I, I do this, that, the other. I then need to log um, some service management components into the CRM tool on yeah, a, an Edge browser. So I, you know, it will, will constantly monitor what I'm doing day in, day out. You know, I might go for lunch at 12 o'clock, you know, go and walk my dog one day. The next day, I might have a meeting at 12 o'clock and you know, I might do it at one o'clock. Or you know, my patterns change based on what my, my, my work is. It's not a regimented. We don't clock in, we don't clock out the same day in, day out, or well, some people do, but you know, it's understanding what our, our work patterns are and when we're busy, when we're not busy. Like at the moment, I'm on a conference call, I'm on a, on a webinar, so all my resources are kind of minimised. I haven't got you know, loads and loads of resources consuming, um, yeah, c cons consuming other resources there to, to, to incur cost. So yeah, my work pattern varies daily, your work pattern will, will, will vary daily and all of your organization's work pattern will, will vary based on what, what it is you're actually doing there. But this tool could go through and give you an understanding of, of patterns of behavior and understand when, yeah, at the end of the month, finance are busy. OK, that's an assumption we've made because they've got lots of reports. Let's actually demonstrate that with metrics and with the data so that we're removing the assumptions, we're removing the guesses. We can actually see that in you know, a, a report, a, a metric yeah, driven analysis of what's happening within our environment. So this will sit alongside your, your workers and it will passively understand what's going on in your environment. It's not a snooping tool. It's not you know, there to, to, to define productivity. It's there to understand what is running in your environment, what software is being used, how the software is being used, what license entitlement you, you're currently using and what you've currently got, things like that, just to understand you know, how we can make sure your, your users are, are given the right tools to do their job going forward and establishing ultimately a, a proof of concept to, to validate some of these ideas as well. 